fucking what exists in seven years. The self-sabotage of a live stream empire. I don't really believe in Twitch anymore. I don't believe in any of this shit anymore. So, uh, I don't, I just, at the end of the day, I don't think there's any longevity in streaming. I just do this for fun. So, like, at some point, I'm going to wake up one day. One day, I'll wake up and I'll be like, I'm done. I'm done. You know? It's just how it's going to be for me. So, like, I can see why people just don't give a fuck anymore and they're not going to give a fuck. But we'll see what Patrick has to say about this. Dude, I love Patrick CC. If you guys don't sub like Patrick CC, definitely do it. Definitely uh, check him out. Never bothered with Twitch myself. I, Cadaver Copulation. What's up? What's up, man? Thank you for showing up. Thank you for coming through. We uh, are going to spend the day reacting to some music uh, before the Apex Season 17 drops. And we're going to react to this. I used to came I used to be on Twitch every day back in the day, four years ago. Like for like two years straight, I was I did Twitch. And uh I just played video games. I was under a different name. Didn't do any of the stuff that I'm doing now. And uh yeah, it's crazy. It, like whether or not you become successful on Twitch, because there's different levels of success. Like certain people are like, Oh, you're not successful unless you're a millionaire. But to me, I like I made hundreds of friends, I made thousands of dollars, like that's success to me, man. Like, I had fun with it. So, like, whether you're going to have fun or not, it's just like, if Twitch isn't fucking you over, it's the streamers. And it's the Twitter space that the streamers, like, engulf into. Like, everybody's just such a dog shit fucking person that if Twitch doesn't ruin your mentality, the streamers definitely fucking will because they're all out for themselves. They don't give a fuck about anybody except for themselves. And, you know, it's just like, I can't trust people that uh, don't drive cars and can't do their own laundry or cook for themselves. I just, I just can't. I just can't do it, man. It's just how I am. But let's see, let's see what Patrick has to say about Twitch. $5 a month to get an ad for Twitch has been on a steady decline for the past two years, and they have no idea how to fix it. They're potentially losing... Which is crazy to think about because of the pandemic and how many streamers came out of the fucking woodwork. But you gotta remember, a lot of the streamers that I started streaming with four years ago, they don't stream no more. They all gave up, or they all like decided it wasn't for them, or it was too expensive, or too much, or too mentally exhausting, or they're just fucking pieces of shit, and they're still streaming, and they're still faking who they are. That's the issue right there, dude. You know how hard it is to become a streamer off of your true personality, like, and being yourself? Because we all do shit that can get us canceled, 100%. And it's just it's a matter of time before it fucking comes out for most of these people, you know? Losing hundreds of millions of dollars per year, laying off hundreds of employees, banning some of their most important creators, implementing useless features, and are constantly proving how little... This man had Aiden Ross up here like he was an important streamer, dude. No, he's not. No, he's not. Stop making videos about Aiden Ross. He sucks. Nobody wants to talk about him any anymore. I swear. No one gives a fuck about Aiden Ross. Aiden Ross does something stupid. You know what we actually do? We laugh about it. We go, what a fucking idiot. Hopefully, he gets banned always. He should never be in a thing about Twitch downfalls because he's a piece of shit himself. There's, that's a whole nother fucking, that's a whole nother Pandora's box, man. Little they know or care about the live streaming community. Twitch has been the biggest live streaming platform for the better YouTube, part of baby. a decade. But there is some competition on the horizon. Although it wouldn't take much for YouTube to put Twitch out of their misery, it's very likely that their collapse will come from their own self-sabotage. Oh, First shit. and foremost, Twitch's financial stability is confusing. And although they reported $2.8 billion in revenue in 2022, it's unclear how much of that, if any, was profit. However, there are a lot of implications that suggest the company is struggling to be in the green. Twitch's four ways of making money are through subscribers who pay $5 a month to get an ad-free experience Don't as sub well to as me. other small benefits. Never sub to me on Twitch. Sub to my YouTube. Always sub to my YouTube. Do not sub to me on Twitch. I do not want to give Twitch my money because I, I stream on Twitch and YouTube at the same time. Always sub to my YouTube and if you want to give me money, you can donate, but I don't, I don't need it. I don't need it. In-app purchases, which include bits, a digital currency that users can purchase to donate to streamers, partnerships with brands bits and sponsors, too, and of course, the number one, advertising. We don't know how many total paid subscribers there are on Twitch. I did find this metric from Stream Hatchet that says in April of 2021, Twitch had 8.7 million subscribers, where 43% of them were Amazon Prime subs. Yeah, in Prime the middle of the pandemic. Someone who gets an ad-free experience That's for zero dollars. That's gonna happen, dude. We were all sitting at home doing nothing. 
that was like that was the best time to be a streamer because there's so many pe viable fucking viewers out there people that could actually will watch you because they got nothing to fucking do they're sitting at their houses all day long sick or not sick quarantine with all the gaming systems were bought up. Nobody could fucking buy gaming systems. So if you couldn't buy gaming systems, what was the next best thing to do? Watch somebody play video games. Since they already have an Amazon Prime membership because Amazon owns Twitch. Therefore, Twitch doesn't make any money on that sub. In fact, you could argue they're losing money since viewers are paying $0 and not getting ads. And Twitch has to pay creators $1 and some change for that Prime sub. Anyways, this graph indicates that in the month of April, Twitch had 4.7 million pay Paid subscribers times which makes sense because and with amazon as well like more people were buying shit you were getting more shit through the mail at that time than ever so why wouldn't you want uh amazon prime which transfers over to twitch prime which is now prime gaming which is the dumb name it's five dollars which is 23 and a half million times 12 months average which would be about 282 million dollars in sub revenue in 2021 but twitch on average receives between 30 and 50 percent of that money because for affiliate streamers twitch takes 50 percent or two dollars and fifty cents. Twitch was such a weird platform, at least to me. I don't need to pay five dollars to watch people do weird shit. Just watch my friends do dumb shit like we used to in the nineties. So I get exactly where you're coming from, uh, Cadaveric. I, I, it's not for me. It's not based off of like um my friends. It's just like I would love to give my friends five dollars to watch them. You know what I mean? Like that would be fantastic. But if I give you five dollars and you're only getting two fifty of it. That kind of sucks, man. Like, I would rather just donate you the $5 through a different link or just give you $5, you know what I mean? Instead of, you know, you only getting half of it. But it makes sense. Like, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy, man. People are getting paid to sit in their house and do exactly what I'm doing right now, and people get paid millions of dollars. Cents of the $5 subscriber price, and for partners, they take 30%, or $1.50 of the $5. So if we favor the high end of 50%, that would equal $141 million in subscriber revenue that goes to Twitch. But if Stream Hatchet's estimation of Twitch only having 4.7 million paid subscribers per month is wrong, and they actually have around 10 to 20 million paid subscribers per month, that would bring Twitch's cut between 300 and 600 million dollars per year some people argue that Twitch a taking a 50 percent cut of sub revenue is just an act of greed a lot of because most of, money. of their money comes from advertising now 141 to 600 million dollars is nothing to scoff at but compared to 2.8 billion i can see why people make the claims however it seems like Twitch needs this money to keep their business from failing. According to a blog post in November 2020 it said that Twitch's viewership is dropping significantly by November 2022, that was when, that's literally when everybody started to stop being sick and was going out again. Makes sense. Clancy, who is now the CEO, announced that creators who make over $100,000 in sub revenue will no longer get their 70-30 split. It will go down to 50-50 and over time, all creators will split the sub revenue 50-50 with Twitch. Why? Well, because it's too expensive to run Twitch. Delivering high definition, low latency, always available live video to nearly every corner of the world is expensive. Using is. the published rates from Amazon's Web Services Interactive Video Service, or IVS, which is essentially Twitch video, live video costs for a 100 CCU streamer wow. who streams 200 hours a month. Wow. Okay, so Twitch is paying out $1,000 per month per streamer who streams to 100 viewers uh, on average for 200 hours a month. They're paying out $1,000 every month. So imagine if you're a streamer with two viewers and you stream $200, 200 hours a month. What's really happening here? more than $1,000 per month. Now, what they said here is very misleading. If you want to start your own live stream platform, you can pay for Amazon IVS, or basically Twitch's infrastructure. The problem with Dan's statement here is there is simply no way Amazon is charging Twitch the same rate that anyone else would be charged for using IVS. I'm on YouTube Why now because Amazon I don't like do Twitch. That? Well, again, because yeah, Amazon streaming's kind of dumb sometimes. Amazon would charge me or you $1,000 per month to deliver. I can't stream every fucking day, man. Like, that shit's too much. I used to do that, and it's just like, it ruins your fucking life and your mental. You lose everything, dude. I lost my job. My fucking car was breaking down. I didn't give a fuck. Like, I just didn't give a fuck about anything other than streaming. That's fucked up, man. I gained so much weight. I was like 230 pounds. Blech. 
of our HD live video to 100 concurrent viewers at 200 hours a month, but they likely charge Twitch at least 50 to 90% less than that. In fact, nobody has any real idea of how much it costs to run Twitch. Obviously, you have employee compensation with thousands of employees, but more importantly, billions of dollars per year in energy costs to maintain those servers and deliver perfect quality on-demand streaming all over the world at any given moment. And although we don't know those costs, we could pretty safely say that taking a higher percentage from their partners is not going to cover the expenses. Now regarding how much Twitch makes from bits, it's unclear, but I'm sure most streamers can agree that bits donations are nowhere near as common as subscribers. Yeah, it was reported bits, that bro. Twitch generated $185 million from in-app purchases. I'm not sure if this includes subscribers and bits together, or if it's just bits and other microtransactions like badges, gift cards, and loot cave. Either way, we are learning that at best, Twitch is generating roughly $750 million from subs and in-app purchases, or at worst, $185 million. Regardless of what the real numbers are, we know that without a doubt, Twitch could never survive on just paid subscribers and in-app purchases, Facts. which means that likely the two plus billion dollars in revenue they generated in 2022, pretty much it comes from advertising and brand partnerships. The problem with this is advertisements are destroying the viewer experience. Creators have a terrible revenue split with Twitch, which has led to a near 10% decrease in average viewership and watch time for the past two years. We all know how annoying ads can be, besides when I do them, because today's video- Ads are annoying as fuck, man. Like, you hop into a dude's stream and you get like three seconds of their stream and then boom, ad. And you're like, all right, not, not a big deal. It's an ad. And then you look up in the corner and it's one of six by Aura. Have you ever Googled your name and seen yourself on one of those strange sites that has way too much information about you? It feels pretty weird to run eight to 10 minutes of ads per hour. Multiple minutes of ads being displayed consecutively will result in viewers either leaving the platform or clicking. On I hop out immediately, guys. If you have ads on and there's like six to fucking eight of them in a row before I can even say hi, especially if I'm raiding you, I'm fucking out. I'll raid you, but I'm out, dude. I'm not waiting fucking three minutes to say, hey, and get be able to hear you. Oh, I hate that off to another streamer. The only problem is every time you click on a new stream, you will get hit with another non-skippable 30 second ad. There is no way to skip the ads. There is no way to escape the ads and there is no way to rewind so the stream and annoying. see what you just it's missed. Like, it's like when you're on um, Facebook and you're like, oh, the 30 second video of something, it's like a 30 second video of like an alligator fucking eating a turtle and you're like i want to watch that and you open it up and it's a minute long ad and i'm like well i'm not spending a minute to watch 30 seconds bye and i'll close it this has led to a near 10 percent decrease in hours watched and average viewers from 2021 to 2022 and both of those metrics are also down in 2023 by five percent simply put there are too many ads on Twitch, but that's a good thing for the company, right? Well, not exactly. Twitch does not have an immense amount of data on who their viewers are because there isn't a whole lot to do on the platform to track it. Think about YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. In just a few minutes, you will be exposed to a large variety of different niches and you are actively pressing the like button or stopping to engage with the content. The amount of specific information you give about yourself without realizing is just data that gets organized and used to sell targeted ads. And that's the reason why if you go onto TikTok and there's there's like a video of a girl shaking her ass and you look at it for too long or if you click her profile all the rest of your videos for the next like two days will be girls shaking their ass it's fucking crazy man to you it took me weeks to get my shit back to normal like i was going through this thing on tiktok where there was legit naked boobies and i was like what the f my whole tiktok was full of it the whole thing and i showed my girlfriend and i showed my other friends and they were like we have no idea what you're talking about and then slowly it started to creep into their shit and then it was all their shit too and it takes you forever to fix that algorithm so i had to go through and uh, not interest not interest not interest and then go like a bunch of video gaming shit it was fucking crazy because of my instagram habits the app knows that i like men's streetwear and accessories skateboarding modern and furniture, rap music, and golf, so they can send me ads related to those things. All Twitch knows about me is that I watch I'm Dante a lot and that he's my favorite streamer. So they could maybe guess what I might be interested in based on what they think I'm Dante's viewers like. 
And because of this, most advertisers don't feel comfortable using Twitch because they don't know if they are truly selling to their target audience. Are you drinking water? When you advertise on YouTube, a brand yes, like Pampers can target as specific as 28 year old married women that live in the Eastern United States and are pregnant or just had their first child. And YouTube can run ads so that mostly viewers who fit in that category will see those ads. If Pampers went to Twitch with that target audience in mind, they would simply not know where to run the ads. The only thing that Twitch knows is that their audience is mostly men ages 13 to 35 who like video games. This eliminates Easy. a huge chunk of potential revenue because only a small amount of brands want to advertise to that audience. Energy drink brands, unhealthy snack brands, car brands, and other men's lifestyle brands love advertising on Twitch, which leads to interesting sponsorships like QT Cinderella baking a cake on a live stream, but with a manscaped partnership that says, we save balls on the screen. To make things worse for advertisers, every deal has to be a long conversation with no the ad sense, sales man. team at Twitch. Back and forth emails, phone calls, contracts, a process that takes forever. But any brand or individual can simply go to YouTube, click start advertising, and run a campaign without ever talking to anyone. Twitch will never be a real competitor piece, if they right? don't figure out a way to get more reliable data on their users and create a programmatic ad system so brands can sell to their audience without relying on communication with a Twitch employee. And because of their inability to produce substantial revenue, they hired internal leadership who would Those shift the focus away from sick. creators and towards driving profits. The senior vice president of global creators, Constance Knight, created a new initiative, cut costs, cut costs, cut costs. Every decision over the course of her tenure was fully based on how it was going to increase company profits, which isn't necessarily her position since she is the head of global creators. Therefore, the needs of creators were constantly being ignored. In one specific example, Knight said that burnout was not a valid reason for creators to not meet contractual obligations. If you don't know, most of Twitch's top creators have contracts directly with the platform where they are being paid essentially a salary or hourly rate to stream exclusively on the platform. These contracts That's require cool, them to though. stream anywhere from 70 to 100 hours per month, it's which is easy. roughly three hours per day or four hours per day if you want the weekends off. That's the easy. VP was not letting creators use burnout or basically them being unmotivated to stream as a valid excuse to not meet their monthly stream requirements, which led to Twitch employees feeling like the company was losing its way. 12 Twitch employees had gone to HR or logged complaints with their superiors overnight. Five had left the company citing night as a reason. Now, some of you watching could never be convinced that sitting at a computer and playing video games could become a stressful or an annoying job in any way, shape or form. But at the end of the day, it still is a job and anyone can burn out from any job that they do every single day for years. Another previous Twitch employee took to Facts. YouTube to state how they feel about the company. Twitch doesn't care about creators. Twitch cares about looking like they care about creators. Everything Twitch has done for the last four years has been with the goal of feeling like they understand and care. Although this could seem like an employee who is just upset about being fired, Twitch has shown time and time again that no matter how large of a creator you are, they will take you down, even at your highest moment. Kai Sinat, a creator who only just started streaming in February of 2021, dominated Twitch in all of 2022. He reached the very rare milestone of 100,000 subscribers, which made him the number one most subscribed creator at that time. This prompted him to do a subathon, which was a 24 7, 28 day long, non stop stream in February 2023 to try and break the record for earning the most subscribers on Twitch in a single month. That record was previously held by Ludwig at 283,000. Not only did Kai break it, he demolished it, peaking at 306,621 all-time subscribers. It was reported that he earned Twitch $10 million, while Kai only received a $2 million payout. These numbers yeah, were false, but and Kai did not appreciate the narrative. Twitch man this man also fucking got... He also got fucking jerked off on stream. Can you drop the link to the donate to the donation, please? What? You want me to react to this? I'll react to it for free. You don't got to pay me to react to stuff. That's fine. You... Mm. 
made 15 to 20 million dollars on Kai Sinat. Yeah, dude, he did a 24-hour, seven days a week stream for 30 days, and there was a there was a scene where he was in his kitchen with his friends, and he's literally getting jerked off under the table. You could see the woman's arm. You could see the woman's arm moving, and then like there's a mirror behind them, and you could see her arm in his pants. Yeah, and then he got banned, and people are like, why did he get banned? Dude, he got jerked off on stream. What the fuck are you talking about? And Kai only brought about two million back to the, to the, to the, bro, where are y'all getting these numbers from? Where are these, oh, where, bro, where are these numbers coming from? Because now it's a narrative that I'm just a black man who's getting used for millions and millions and millions of dollars. Kai breaking the sub record was huge news, covered by publications like the BBC and Bloomberg. And most of us would assume that Twitch would do anything to boost Kai up. After all, he made history on their platform. At the very least, they would try to use this amazing moment to show the world what wonderful opportunities there are for creators on Twitch. They could squeeze out more press with Kai and do campaigns to get more people or brands interested in live streaming. But no, instead, they sent him a $100 pair of sneakers and banned him from their platform. Yes, they sent him sneakers and then banned him because he got jerked off on stream. Do you hear me? He got jerked off on stream. You get banned for that stuff. It better be a Even if it's for three to seven days, like you still get taken off for a little bit. Contracting him off. Congratulations, Kai, on your huge accomplishment. We are so proud of you, Laura, Anna, and all of your friends at Twitch. <laughs> Unfortunately, there was no contract in that package. Twitch did not see enough value in Kai to offer him a streaming contract. Or they are making a very strategic business move. Twitch is very top. It is legendary. The top creators but it's are like, making fuck, man, what do you expect? Five percent. Don't be like, Twitch they banned him for no reason. Like, nah, he got banned because he got jerked of all off of their on revenue stream. Comes from one percent of their creators. Kai became a one percenter without getting an exclusive contract, which means Twitch is profiting immensely off him. It seems like they are not giving him a paid contract because they don't think he will leave. His largest audience and main financial vehicle is on Twitch. And if it was up to them, they wouldn't give streamers contracts to begin with. They want to get to a point where they aren't as reliant on the top 1% of creators. So if someone leaves the platform, they will be just fine. YouTube has 600 creators with over 10 million subscribers. That's a if lot. If 20% of those people stopped creating, YouTube wouldn't be hurting financially. Eventually, those creators will be replaced. But Twitch 1%ers can't be replaced as quickly or as easily. Maybe Kai is... He says that the one percenters on Twitch can't be replaced as easily because it is so fucking hard to be a streamer. It is so fucking hard to do this type of shit day in and day out and have the personality and not be a piece of shit. And it's like most of the time these people have the personality, but they are pieces of shit. But their personality is able to cover up the pieces of shit parts of them. You know what I mean? That makes sense. Or they just fake it is a transitional point for Twitch as a company to see if they can keep 1% talent without paying them additional money. Just a few short weeks after they sent him the sneakers, Kai Sinat announced he was banned from the platform for getting jerked on April 17th. Off. How could they possibly ban the number one creator on the site? Nobody knew the reason why, but it prompted support from people like Kyrie Irving and Nicki Minaj. He got jerked off on stream. Twitch told Kai it was from a GTA clip where he promoted simulated sexual activity. Nah. This was the clip. It's because he got jerked off. Five, four, three, Mm. Two. Oh my god! Uh, my boss! <laughs> my boss! He pretended like he was receiving services from a fake woman in a video game. Meanwhile, there's a ton of real borderline sexual activity on that website. Let there's alone a lot simulated. of it. Twitch is just reminding him that he, no matter how big he is... Won't you gotta think it's multiple things that he's done that gets you banned. You don't just get banned right off rip. You get a warning most of the time, but like... But like I said, bro, he got jerked off the month before on stream and didn't get banned. And then he gets banned for this. They were probably like, yo, he got jerked off last month. And now he's pretending to get a blowjob now and coming in a, a fake girl's face. 
We got to ban him for three days. To break the rules. And everyone knows Twitch's terms of service are extremely unclear. In 2019, Brazilian Twitch streamer Gabriel Baptista received a suspension because he showed a Pink Floyd poster during his broadcast. Faria was banned for wearing gym clothes that Twitch claimed looked like lingerie. Deller was banned for smashing a keyboard over his... Deller's also a piece of shit. Stop using pieces of shit in these videos as examples man you had aiden ross right at the beginning who's transphobic and a bigot so it doesn't matter what he says or does kai Sinet likes to get jerked off on stream and makes like all this sexual shit on his stream it's gonna happen and now you're gonna show deller who's known to drop the n-word on stream during fucking overwatch events got kicked out of pro overwatch and now is just a shitty ass streamer that sits in his house and cries that he has no friends and he's miserable so he beats himself up with a keyboard I'm telling you, stop. These, these streamers are fucking idiots, man. His head. And Dr. Disrespect was banned for, well, they never. We don't know what Dr. Disrespect got banned for, but I like Dr. Disrespect because he's a character. I know that's a character. I know that the real person who plays Dr. Disrespect has a different name. We all know his name. And uh, he has a life outside of this. Like, he literally puts on this getup and gets into character and plays. These other people are just like, all right, I'm going to stream today. And then they hop on and they're just shitty people. <laughs> never told him why. Sadly, Kai's ban is just one of an extremely long list of incredibly stupid bans that Twitch has given out and will continue to in the future. I don't think it's stupid. So with Twitch continuously making the wrong decisions when it comes to profits, employees, and creators, is competition a real threat to their company? Recently, the live streaming platform Kick has made some noise after their $30 million plus See? deal where they... Look at this, look at this, dude. Fuck this guy. They gave him a $30 million deal and he sits around and spews transphobic and homophobic fucking and racist shit every day. Fuck him. Exclusively acquired Aiden Ross. Kick works and looks exactly almost like Twitch. The main difference is that they have a much more lenient terms of service. Mm. Streamers can gamble, say and do just about anything they want without getting banned. And the biggest thing is that they are offering creators a 95% cut of their subscriber revenue. Jared FPS, a kick streamer, highlighted his kick earnings at $3,800 for 800 subscribers, which would be about $2,000 on Twitch. However, I don't They're think They're like, this is oh, going to be it's life-changing numbers. That's only $1,800 more. Hey, guess what, dude? Get a job, and you'll have the most fucking easiest way to get money ever, dude. It's like the biggest fucking life hack ever, dude. You get a job, and you get paid weekly. It's crazy to think about enough to really compete with Twitch. Think about all of the problems I highlighted in this video. Kick is going to have to deal with all of those same problems, but more importantly with advertisers, they will be targeting the same niche as Twitch, but with less censorship and more risque content, advertisers will feel even less comfortable than they already do with Twitch. But the biggest problem is, Kick is built on Amazon IVS. Remember when Twitch said it was too expensive to run Twitch on IVS? So Kick is running off of the same live streaming service that Twitch is. Wow, dude. And you don't say that Kick isn't just copying Twitch's every fucking move? Well, Kick uses the same infrastructure. The difference is, Kick is likely paying at least 20 to 50% more than Twitch is to keep their business operating. So in a way, no matter how successful Kick gets, they will be paying millions, if not billions, to Amazon, who could use that money to fund Twitch. Now, YouTube gaming, or their live streaming sector, could very well be a threat. The worst part about YouTube is that the live streaming experience is just not as good. The chat is chaotic and hard to read. You can't look at chat logs, which makes it really hard to moderate. The raid feature is terrible. The discovery page for live streamers actually looks like they don't update it. And they lack many of the small features that make Twitch streaming more dynamic and more fun. Yet, even with all of those downsides, YouTube still holds nearly 15% market share in the live streaming space. So why is YouTube a threat? It's like very YouTube. simple. YouTube has 2.5 billion monthly active users compared to Twitch's 140 million. YouTube has wow. a strong and reliable ad revenue system, which that generated $29 billion dollars last year. Plus, they are offering 70-30 splits for streamers. And if you build a following up as a streamer on YouTube, you now have a whole YouTube channel that you can post regular videos on. You just built yourself two assets at one time. Most Twitch streamers have to post clips of I their do. streams on YouTube in order to grow. And even still, the translation is not that great, and they end up being more popular on YouTube. If YouTube just got their live streaming page to operate exactly like Twitch or Kick, which wouldn't really be that hard for them, it wouldn't make any sense for small streamers to use Twitch. 1% streamers like Hassan and XQC wouldn't immediately jump ship, 
or maybe never because they already have a huge following. At the same time, everybody has a price. Nobody thought Ludwig would switch platforms, but he did. So why hasn't YouTube tried to take over? Especially since I claim it'll be so easy for Ludwig them. Ludwig is such Maybe a they just awesome don't streamer, see though. live streaming as a worthwhile business investment. Think about everything I mentioned in this video. All the hurdles, all the expenses, all the bans, moderation, discoverability issues, creator contracts, advertiser uncertainty. Maybe YouTube thinks that live streaming will never be as profitable as video on demand, film, sports entertainment, and music streaming. Maybe live streaming will always be considered a niche subgenre of the entertainment industry. Yep. Until YouTube sees a bar packed full of people paying a $10 cover to watch Hassan debate Aiden Ross or Kai Sanat and 21 Savage react to Drake memes, they probably won't even bother. So what should Twitch do? Well, they definitely need to figure out a middle ground with ads. They need advertisers to pay the bills, and we as viewers understand that. Maybe a feature could be implemented that allows viewers to skip an ad or two just in case they pop up at a crucial time in the stream. Maybe even yeah, a feature dude, that allows you be in the middle of a dog fight a reward, and all of a sudden an ad comes up. Ad time like, okay, some cool, thanks. In somebody's stream. I didn't want to see any Kinda of that. Like how mobile games will allow you to watch an ad for a reward. Or you could exchange personal survey information for less ads. It's invasive, but hey, they're going to try to do that anyway. And after they improve their ad system, just keep the 70-30 revenue split with all creators, big or small. Most platforms provide a better split than that, so that's the least they can do. Also, more clarity and consistency when it comes to streamer bans seems like a very fair ask. Just tell people why they were banned in detail. Timestamp it, provide a clip. You Every need that. single time someone is it's banned, it's something that's it highly needed to help a lot of Most confusion and a lot of people they being need pissed to off. ability for small slash medium sized creators. Twitch streamers relying on YouTube or TikTok to gain a following is absolutely ludicrous. Twitch is way too reliant on the one percenters, and they're way too reliant on other platforms. Ultimately, I want to see Twitch win. And the streaming community wants to see them win as well. Yeah. I think live streamers I want to see are incredibly win. underrated in terms of their entertainment value and ability to hold an audience for hours on end. But if they don't make these critical improvements and YouTube just decides to invest a billion dollars into making YouTube gaming a fierce competitor, I think Twitch could be on the verge of going out of business five to ten years down the line. It makes sense, dude. If if YouTube decided to just drop some money into this, it's game over. Like. And I don't think Kick will ever go fucking anywhere anyway, so I don't really care about Kick at all. Kick is more about money than morals. And that sucks, but that's a whole nother fucking basket as well, man. But yeah, Twitch won't exist in seven years. Believe, I mean, in about ten years, like, yeah, it could be it could be done. Like, if, like, like you said, if, if YouTube decides to just invest in their gaming platform... Do you know how many people are going to want to stream on there? And because you can already post your videos. That's what I do. I literally do that. That's what I do. I stream and I clip shit at the same time. I put it up as shorts and then I fucking make videos out of stuff. And then I post reactions. It's a one stop. I don't have to go anywhere else, man. Fuck TikTok. Fuck Twitch. I don't have to do any of that stuff if I don't want to. You know what I mean? I already get enough here. I'm already having more fun on YouTube in the past, in the past year than I have in four years on Twitch. That's all that's all that's all that matters to me. It's all that fucking matters to me.